want to cover today is basically how to format the content. Uh, we'll be working with some uh, formulas and calculations, um, just the basics, um, not too, um, too in detail, and then basic uh, filter, and then also split or concatenate, to concatenate cells. All right, so Excel, it's similar to Google Sheets. Uh, some people prefer Google Sheets, because, uh, but some of the functionalities are different, but I do prefer Excel. Uh, this is basically a spreadsheet and it, it consists of columns and rows. So basically you get it, it's uh, divided into work, it's a workbook and then divided into worksheets. And at the bottom, we can see here, uh, it, you the different sheets. So each tab represents a sheet. And okay, so this, the, if you look at the row and the column, this would be a row and this would be a column. This, where the two meet, would be called a cell, and that's the intersection. And then also, uh, so basically, this is what I just said, it's the row, and then also the column. And then if I type in one cell, you'll see a, is a, a cell address appears in the name box. So the cell name would be then C5. So first the letter, then the number. And then when we type in a formula, uh, this would be the best place to look when you are typing because uh, sometimes what happens is when you're typing in a name, it will overlap. So it will overlap, but if you look here at the formula bar, it will give you uh, the full the script, uh, the full text that you are busy with. So now when working in, uh, in spreadsheets, uh, we use, we always have to use for, form, for, for formulas, but um, it shouldn't be, it's, don't be afraid of formulas because uh, it's not that bad, it's just basic. It's, as long as you use this um, equal sign, as long as the equal sign is there, Excel will know that you're giving it instruction that a calculation will be happening. So you'll be asking it to do something for you. And then the others is all the basic mathematical, the mathematical symbols, which is the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, and the division, which can also be useful when calculating learners' marks and percentages. Okay, then uh, there's a few other things we can do as well. So uh, the, the um, ampersand you will need to, to concatenate, which means combine. So it will combine the text or cell values. Uh, there's a comma that will separate arguments. And then a semicolon, a colon and a semicolon, uh, which, which, uh, uh, which will also um, indicate the range. And then also when doing the formulas, we need to use the the bracket so we open the bracket and we close the bracket okay okay so now for uh let's say we're using the sum function and this okay so we first start with the equal sign and then the sum and then we open the brackets and do the range okay so we can uh add so if i would like to add i say uh, the equal sign is um so cell a1 plus a2 and that will give you the total. So this is this is just uh, basics. Okay. So to start off, as I said before, you have the column and the row, and then there where your cursor is would be the the active cell. If in a case where we need to uh, resize the column width, we need to just see that there is a double-sided arrow. So between the two columns, there's a line, and then the, uh, your cursor will change to a double-sided arrow and then you can just pull it to the one side or to the right or whichever way you want to change the size okay and then also uh, in another case you need you need to put in a line break something text that overlaps but i still want i want two things on in one block so if we can just put our cursor there where we need it and then alt enter that's just a shortcut there is a few shortcuts but uh, we don't have to stress about that <laughs> Uh, because we can use our mouse and our our, uh, our right click. <laughs> okay, so that's just to put in a line break. Okay, so the different formats, uh, as I said, right click uh, this here is the the place we want to be. So in this case, we have uh, clicked on B two, and then we right click, and then this will pop up, and then you'll see that it says format cells. And that's where we can do all our formatting. And then also conditional formatting. In the case where 
we would like to add some color and then the options are greater than and less than uh, we don't have to use all this uh, just what we need uh, in cases where maybe the learners the marks you want to uh, a good more uh, the top learners you want to maybe uh, change their color and then uh, maybe absent learners or uh, learners that maybe need intervention you want to make a different color okay and then we come to the formulas which is as i said uh, we need the equal sign to start your formula and whatever you want to do after that whether it's addition subtraction percentage so it always has to start with an equal sign and then also the filter a uh, filter make it easier if you maybe have a uh, classes and sorry maybe a few classes and the and you want to just uh you're looking for a certain learner or maybe even the uh, the marks or absent learners or you want to filter them in, in a certain order okay that's what the filter button is there for Okay, and then I'll concatenate again. I will look into that as well, where we can separate the, uh, we can type in something, the details in one cell, and then we can also split it. So we can go from more than one cell to one cell, or from one cell to more than one cell. Yeah, I've got a few learners' names and a few marks. So what's happening here is that the learners, we need to first look at getting this to something that looks a bit nicer, and we need to start uh, with the rows and columns resizing so at, at the top here i have this, the surname the name over here i have the name and surname but we can only see off the surname and then i have term four now uh let's first just resize this we're gonna resize it a bit so okay so when working in a spreadsheet we look at the the top okay so here i've got my home my insert this is the top ribbon here uh, I've got home, insert page, layout, formulas, we've got data, review, as well as view, developer, and help. Now, in, in my case here, I want to be at home, and I want to format. So everything you see here, you, you I'm sure you'll recognize this from, from working in Word, this area over here. Okay, now I'm going to just resize my column. Okay, so the top here is where I said is the, the columns. So the columns are labeled A, B, C, and so on. And then the rows are labeled one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so when resizing the, the columns, I need to just hover over this two columns here where I want to um, resize. So uh, once it makes this double-sided arrow, everybody can see that, the double-sided arrow, I can widen my column. So I'm widening it there. Okay, but I still can't see the the name part. So okay, just one second. I'm gonna just move it back, and then I've got this one. Okay, this one I can move back as well. Okay, so now uh, either uh, there's one of two options here. I can either move it. I can either move it. Okay, now yeah, I can move it until the name and surname appears both, or we can just have it one on top of the other such as this one so when as well with the um with the rows, you can also wait for the double side arrow between row one and two and then you can in the row okay so then the other option is uh where i said previously where we can uh put in a line break so there where i want the line break i i can just put my cursor here so here is the the formula bar so this part over here which is name and surname and then i'll my curse is there and then I'll enter then it will go into two lines so it will display as two lines so this will be as two lines okay okay now the other option is I'll just, I just want to un undo that the other option is we can uh, um this one that says here wrap text We can wrap text. That is another option we can use. Okay, now for this um, spreadsheet or this work mark sheet, I'm calling it. This mark sheet is displaying in percentage, and I would like to add a 
I would like to add a heading here. So I'm going to insert a row. Okay, so when inserting, I will just click on the row where I want to insert. So this is the row and then insert. So automatically it will insert a row on top, on top of my, my headings here. Okay, and then also it will give me like a message here. So please uh, take note of the message. And then, and then either you say format same as, as above or same as below or which uh, is applicable. Sorry about that. Okay, now um, in, uh, okay, so here I want to add a heading. So I want to say, uh, this is my term. for these results okay and now again uh, this is only appearing in one in one um, cell so that means it's overlapping again so now I can use the option that says merge merge and center so I want to use this whole I want to use a b c and d so I will just okay so once you see this um, white cross that means you can, you are you are busy in an active cell. So once this is uh, appearing, this uh, white cross, you can select the four cells and then click on merge and center. So then you have your heading. And then I would like to also just add some color. So just to make it more interesting, we can either you can uh, change the font color and you, or you can change the background color. So this is uh, where you can do a normal formatting, normal formatting of the text. Okay, so now also we have the uh, the background here. It seems a bit too white. So I would like to get some lines as well. So I want it to look like a well, I want I want borders in here. Okay, because when you're going to print this, it's only going to print as these uh, this font and this uh, words on on a page. Okay, so that won't be very nice. So I want some, I want some borders. Okay, so now again, I've selected the whole, everything, the data, the whole uh, worksheet. Okay, so now another, uh, we can control A and it will select the whole worksheet. So it will only select where there is information in. Okay, and then I'm going to right click. So I've selected the worksheet, or the mark sheet, and then I can just uh, click on whatever else I want to do. And I said earlier, we need to look at format cells. Okay, so this is where we would like to do different things. Uh, when you go to number, it will give you, or you can say, okay, this, this worksheet or this column contains numbers. You can say it's percentage, fractions, uh, different things here. Okay, but that's not what I want now. You can even change the font uh, direction whichever way you want it and over here you can also change to different sizes or different kind of borders so i want to change the outside border to uh, to a bit thicker border so i'll just do the outline and then i'm going to say okay okay so now my my mark sheet has borders okay we can even add this one as well uh shading so i'll just add some shading there as well so it's like the Okay, now the next thing is that I'm, what I wanted to do was the concatenate function. So concatenate is where we split. Uh, so I want to actually uh, have the name, the name and the surname of the learner in in this in the cell in one cell. So we want to join these, and then and then I will open my brackets, and then when entering into formulas or formulas, we will use the the cell. We click on the cell. So I'm not going to type in A3, I'm just going to click on A3, this is the surname of the learner. And then we're going to use the ampersand, which is that little and sign. And then we have open your inverted commas, the space, and then close inverted commas. And then again the uh, and sign, and then we click on the name and we close the brackets. Okay, so it worked. <laughs> Yay. So it gave me the surname and the name in one cell. So that wasn't too bad. 
Okay, so what I want to do now is I just want to swap it around. Actually, I actually wanted the this. Okay, so I'll open the uh, equal sign. Concat. Okay, concat, and then we have the open bracket. And now I say I'm saying that I want bold to be first. And uh, the ampersand, which is that little and sign and then your inverted commas a space because I want the space between the two name between the name and the surname and then also then again the bracket uh, inverted commas so I'll put the, uh, so it's again equal sign concat and B so I want B I want B3 B3 and the, the sign and and sign inverted commas space inverted commas and sign again and then okay so I've got in a3 it's always highlighting a3 and then I'll just close the bracket okay thank you so it worked <laughs> and then so I have bow models uh, in one cell now okay so I just want to make this a bit bigger so now I've, uh, I've done that and I've been stressed out. So now I would like to actually not do it again. So that's the best thing about Excel. Um, we have the folder function. So if you click on the, the, the cell that you just worked on and there's a formula in, your formulas are ready to go. Now we, all we want to do is we want to fold it down to the rest of the, the class. So we want all of them to have the name, first the name and then the surname. Pull it down and select the whole range. So the whole range will then copy that formula to the rest of the, the class or to the rest of the well, uh, mark sheet. But I just want to add up these. So we can say the equal sign again. Now the next instruction, we want the sum. So I'll click on that and it will give me the sum. And then automatically it will... Okay, so because I have two blanks, it's selecting only these four learner's marks. But I don't want that, so I'll just go from uh, bold. I'll just go down and select. So this we call the range. So the range would be from D3 to D16. So D, okay, there's D3, that's Bo Morris. And then we have uh, Joe Martin at the bottom is D16. And then I'll just click enter. And then it gives me the total for that. So you can also just check on your calculator if you want to check if that's correct. So, yeah, and then from there, I'm sure you can also work out the average if you're using your calculator. But as you can see at the bottom, I've also added the average. So for average, I'll go to the same place. So we want to see what's the average of these learners' marks. Is it good? Is it not so good? So I'll in, um, add my equal sign again and then go to average. Okay, and now again, it's just selecting the uh, this random uh, cells over here, or this range. And I don't want that range, so I'm just clicking on the range that I want. So it's D3 to D16 again. Okay, so now it's uh, folded up there for me. And I'm saying I'm going to look at what the average is going to be. And so the average is a uh, random average. Okay, so it's just below 50%. And then um, we have a few learners that didn't write the test. So we need to find out well before I do that I would like to just go and see how many how many learners do I have in the class so actually that's one yeah this could be a class now I want to just add in a in a column so I'm adding a column so here's my column a b c d and I want to add a column in there so I'm just going to wait till it clicks uh, it becomes a like this black arrow here pointing down so the arrow is pointing down and then I'll just go insert and now it's added a, a extra column so so now automatically my formulas uh, has changed so if you can look if you can see I'm not sure if you can see that it's not very, if it's not very clear so it's changed everything from D to E so the range that I'm working with is now E so I've added this column over here uh, because I wanted to add numbers so I'm just making it a bit smaller so I'll just add here on top, say number. Okay, 
is a bit too big. Okay, I can also amend my text, make it smaller. Okay, so Bo is the first learner. And now I want to add in numbers. Now instead of going down and tapping one, two, three, and so so I must wait for that double arrow to appear. Okay, so my uh, not double arrow, the black cross to appear. So I've got one in my cell. And then I'm just going down up until the last learner. Oopsie. <laughs> That's too much. Okay, so I'm going down to Joe Martin. And what's happened now is it, it, it's folded it down. Oh. To only one so i don't want ones i want it to be i want to know how many learners is in this class okay and once again this little message here at the bottom you need to click on it click on that little arrow and then it says copy cells full in full series full formatting only full without formatting or flash form okay then i, I want to say full in series so automatically it enters up until 14 so we have 14 learners here and that's one way to do it count is the equal sign count open brackets and then we select the range and then we close the bracket so the range is e3 to e16 and then i'll just enter so now it's giving me the amount of 12 comma zero zero however uh, i i don't want this um, zero zero at the end there so okay so there was two learners that didn't write so okay so that will add up to my 14 learners and then i would like to just change this uh, so the data in here is um, showing me that it's in a decimal so i would like to have this just in number so i select this range over here right click format cells again then we go to number and then i change that decimal spaces there to zero so now i have 12 learners and then the blanks are the learners I did not write. So the absent learners. So the test, they still need to complete the test. So again, I'm gonna say equals count. And this, this one is count blank. So I type in count blank, and then uh, don't forget the bracket. And then we will select the range again, the same range, E, E3, two, E16. And we close the bracket. And then it will count the absent learners. So the the missing marks will be then counted as the blanks or the blanks then will be the absent learners okay now uh, for intervention purposes I will, I will actually want to find out which learners uh, did well and as well which learners maybe need some extra help so above 50 percent so i want to know who is the learner that, that is getting good marks and then we are going to add conditions so again the count the count function so now we're counting the learners that did above 50%. And this one we count, we call it count if. So count if and then open the bracket. And then the range again, the range. So this is the data we're working with, the range. And then we're going to add another instruction. So semicolon. And then in bracket commas. And this would be then the learners that got more than 50%. 50% and more. So that would be more than 49. So the more than sign and then 49 and then again the inverted commas and then we're going to close the bracket and see if that one works. Okay, great. So that one worked. Okay, so we have seven learners that did over 50%. We can count it. Say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so there is seven learners that the marks they reached was more than 50%. And then we're going to see, we're going to do the same calculation for the, for the learners below. So we're going to see if we can do it again, but then we're just going to change the instruction. Okay. So now I want to do some conditional formatting. So conditional formatting, again, we are adding in more instructions, but we want to, because we want to find out which learners we want to work with and which learners are, are okay, they can cope with the work. We want to add some color to this range. So to do conditional formatting, as you can see on top here, it says conditional formatting. I will select the range I'm working with. And then I will start with 
the learners at what above 50 percent so the first thing i'll do is go to highlight sour rules a greater than and then um, it automatically does its own thing here but i'm giving the instruction so i'm saying i wanted above 49 so the above 49 learners um, i wanted in green just to show that they're okay okay but they don't have green they have green full with dark green text and so on and then yeah at the bottom it says custom format so i want to go to custom format and then we will go to full and then yeah i'll put the bright green color and then i will say okay and then okay again so all the learners with marks about above 50 percent will have green so you can see the green color there and then i will select it again so for the learners that did not well it's not they did not fail but they need a bit of a bit more help so we'll go back there and highlight less than this time so it was first greater than now it's less than and then i'll say less than 50%, so it will be less than 50%. And then I want the color also to change again. I want it a bit yellowish. And I'll say OK. And OK again. So now it's also uh, colored in the two learners that did not write the text. So for the, they are a bit worrying. So I would like to actually make sure that when we can, we will ask them to write the test. But I have to just make it. So I want to do a different rule for this learner, these learners. So not uh, not the first one. So I scroll down to where it says new rule, new rule. I click on new rule, and then the second one over here it says format only cells that contain. So I'm giving the instruction, the blanks. So I'm only for, um, focusing on the blanks. So I'll go to format over here, and then the blanks. I will do the learners that were absent, which is worrying, and then I will add red to that. And okay, and then we have learners. So the learners marks are color coded according to uh, what they achieved in the test. So now we want to look at something else, which is called a filter. So I want to filter the learners. Okay, to do filter, you need to uh, have, have a look at the top here again, on top where it says data. So we click on data and then we go to the next, uh, to the next tab. And here in the middle, it says filter. So once I click on filter automatically, everything in your top, in your top row will have little filter arrows pointing down so you can filter it whichever way you want so i'm going to be looking for the learners that needs assistance or the learners that needs to write again so i will just click on this arrow button four and i'm looking at filter by color maybe you have more learners uh, many more learners in your class and then you're just looking at certain learners so there if i click on the red so it's filter by color i click on the red and it will only give the learners that were absent and so it will display those learners and then I'll do it again for the yellow. So these learners, I would like to maybe spend more time with, maybe revise the work again. And definitely the other two needs to write the test. And then the other learners, we're not too worried about them. Uh, they are, I'm sure they are coping fine. Filter by, then we can look at those as well. So they are the learners 